Hi there, this is Solid Children from Solid Children Films, and by the pricking of our thumbs, Something Wicked This Way Comes, from 1983, based on the Ray Bradbury story, script, written by Ray Bradbury, and the film directed by Jack Clayton. Um, it stars Jason Robards, Jonathan Price, um, Pam Greer, um, Diane Ladd. Obviously Jack Clayton is probably most famous for directing The Innocents. Um, he also directed The Pumpkin Eater and The Lonely Passion of Judith Hearn and he also did Room at the Top and The Great Gatsby with Robert Redford. But Something Wicked This Way Comes, this is a Spanish DVD um, by the pricking of our thumbs, El Carnaval de las Tiniblas doesn't quite work as well. Um, why this doesn't have a Blu-ray, I'm not quite sure. This was a film that terrified me when I watched it when I was a lot younger. It was produced by Disney. An executive producer was Kirk Douglas. And it's kind of, you'd think it's a kid's film. It's about two young boys um, from a small American town who realise that there's something not quite right happening with a carnival that's turned up in October. Right, it's October around Halloween, that should give it away. Um, but it's definitely not a kid's film because it is very dark and very creepy. In the same way that Innocence, even though it features two children, is not a kid's film either. Um, it's funny because I haven't seen it that many times since I watched it as a child. But there's still images in it that have been with me throughout my entire life. Um, Jason Robards plays the town's librarian. Um, Jonathan Price plays Mr Dark, who is the leader. That's his... Um, Carnival um, and Pam Greer even though she doesn't get a lot of lines but her presence is very well known um, She well she's credited as being the Dust Witch because this carnival feeds and gives people um, the chance to go back in time or erase the regrets. Jason Robards at one point says, you know, it's not the regrets of what you've done, it's the regrets of what you haven't done in your life. So we're introduced to characters like the barber who wishes he had lots of romance with women, or maybe more than romance, but this is a kind of a quasi-kids film, so they can't talk about that. Um, there's the person who owns the shop, who's obsessed with money and wants to be rich. There's the kind of old maid school marm of the town, who apparently, when she was young, she was the most beautiful woman in the town. Um, and also Jason Robards has his own regrets, which I won't get into, but you'll have to watch the film. Um, and the carnival has a carousel that goes backwards or forwards and gives people the chance um, to do something differently. Um, now this sounds a little bit like Stephen King's Needful Things. Um, it's because it's a lot like Stephen King's Needful Things. Um, but Ray Bradbury wrote it in 1962 and Stephen King wrote Needful Things in 1991. Um, you can make your own mind up if you watch the film. So this is, you know, the town on the outside is this small kind of rural community, but there is a definite sense of 
the people aren't very happy, they're kind of obviously melancholy, they're kind of full of regret, they're wishing they did things or were somewhere else and involved with other people. So there's a real kind of air of um, disappointment in the town. Um, Royal Dano, who's familiar, because he was probably in about 300 westerns, um, he turns up as a kind of travelling um, lightning rod salesman um, and he, as a storm is um, approaching, and as we know in cinema um, and art in general, if a storm's approaching, it's usually a metaphor. And then this train with the carnival arrives um, with Mr. Dark and his company. Um, and again, there's just such a wonderful sense of dread and atmosphere built up in the first 20 minutes of the film. Um, I should also say if you're an arachnophobe you probably shouldn't watch the film um, for one very memorable scene. Um, so as I say, Pam Greer is listed as the Dust Witch and she appears in various forms throughout the film in various guises depending on what the victim desires or um, is after um, and again she's really effective even though as I say she doesn't get a lot of lines um, but she is the presence because she is Bam Greer and Jonathan Price who most of the time kind of plays He's more on the victim side of life. He tends to play the kind of nebbish characters, you know, Glengarry, Glen Ross, or Brazil. He's kind of the put upon, um, not necessarily clueless characters, but he's kind of less villainous. Um, I'm sure there are films where he played villains, but um, certainly in Something Wicked This Way Comes, he is having a blast and he does a really good job um, with his big um, black moustache um, and beard and top hat and tails um, he's really effective um, you could argue the the ending perhaps isn't the strongest but it is weird because it is a film that I've had a soft spot for for decades without actually seeing it for a while um, but it all came back to me after watching it again um, sadly just in DVD but the DVD does actually look very good um, it's just a wonderful creepy um, atmospheric film that is kind of designed as a kids film but it's not for kids um, there is some heavily disturbing parts in it. You know there's one part where Jonathan Price um, commands Pam Greer to show Jason Robards or give Jason Robards a little feel of death so that when it actually comes he'll know that it's coming. So she um, puts her hands close to him and slows his heart down. I mean, granted, I don't know, but if Pam Greer put her hands close to me, I think my heart would actually increase. Um, but I guess that's the power of the Dust Witch. Um, so it's 95 minutes long, it flies by. Again, they do a really good... Um, Jack Clayton does a really good job of setting up and building the atmosphere in the first 20 minutes of this idyllic little town. I mean, obviously, you know, the two boys, Jason Robard's son... Um, and his friend Jim, um, whose surname is Nightshade. Um, obviously Will, Jason Robards' um, son, is smarter than Jim because he's wearing glasses. And as we know in films, characters who wear glasses are much smarter than people who don't. Um, and they are essentially like brothers, um, Jim Nightshade's father went to the war and never came back um, 
And again, for child actors, they do a good job as well, because as we know, sometimes child actors can be unwatchable. Um, but everybody's really good in this, and it's nice to see Royal Dano not in a Western, um, as the kind of um, Cassandra character, um, pretty much predicting that something bad's going to happen. It's just a wonderful little film. Um, but again, I can't really um, understand why it's not on Blu-ray, but then if it was produced by Disney, it means Disney's probably sitting on it and will never release it because, let's be honest, it is very dark and it's not really going to do well with young children. It'll probably give them nightmares. Um, but it's an absolutely wonderful little film for kids it's not really for kids so thanks very much for watching this random review of something this way something wicked this way comes i've been practicing that all day and i still got it wrong and um, please let me know in the comments what you think of something wicked this way comes um, and hopefully you'll join me again for more random reviews this is solid from solid films saying farewell <laughs>